All right, we're off the edge, and it is episode seven. Ooh. We're flying right through these episodes. Uh, this is your daily watch for your NFL stuff. So uh, appreciate you being here. Before we get into it, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, review. This is Cameron Lynch. I am Jake Ellenbogen, and we're in mock draft season. Uh, probably way before <laughs> the mock draft season was a long time ago. We're in like draft week, but uh, what better time to do it than now? I mean, Let's go. a first round mock draft as close as it gets to the actual draft. Cam, I think this was the the right approach, and I'm excited to get into it with you. Yeah, I'm excited as well. Um, a lot of these, <clears throat> how we built this up, Jake, right? Our, our previous episodes, episodes one through six, were, hey, these are the sleepers. You know, these are guys that won't be going on the first day. But, you know, with this, now we're getting to the meat and potatoes, right? The guys that we'll see fly off the board come Thursday, and we're going to talk about them right now and give, give us our thoughts on them, so. Lock in. <laughs> Absolutely. We're locked in. And uh, betonline.ag, just so you know, is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. Bet Online is always your sports information headquarters this season as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs, basketball, MLB, NHL, hockey, right to UFC and boxing. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head on over to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. So, Cam, uh, we're starting where the only way you start in the NFL draft, the number one overall pick, right? Uh, so, the Carolina Panthers got this by arm wrestling. No, I kid. They traded uh, <laughs> with the Chicago Bears and... Let's be honest, Cam. You're not trading up to number one overall from number nine to and giving away a number one receiver if you don't have signal caller in mind. So the question mm. remains, which signal caller is it going to be? We've talked about it. Who's your pick, man? Jake, I'm going to have to go with our guy. I mean, it's, it's no secret at this point, Jake. We all know that this guy canceled his meetings throughout the, throughout the rest of the week. Um, after his Panthers visit, it seems like it's about locked in at this point. Um, you know, I know he gets the the Drew Brees comparison, um, you know, guy 5'10", 204, coming out of Matter Day High School, Gatorade Player of the Year as well, uh, Bryce Young. That's who I'm rolling with. I'm sure the rest of the world is as well, unless there's a crazy trade come Thursday, Jake. Right now, this is the mock draft, you know, unless something crazy happens. We'll see. I know Aaron Rodgers went to the Jets today. So, hey, you know, thing, or the day before today. So things get, can get crazy. But I got I got Bryce Young going first for me. Um, one, one thing, Jake, before I pass the mic over to you that I saw that, I, you know, seeing CJ Stroud as well, like, which one am I going to go with? I saw magic when I saw Bryce, you know, like just watching him. I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> you know, that's a little bit different. When I saw when I saw CJ, you know, I'm seeing like he's He's looking like he's supposed to look. You know, you go to Ohio State, you got Marvin Harrison Jr. as your receiver. They're supposed to look like that. And seeing guys like Bryce Young, he does have great receivers. But just to see him so short, get out of plays, make things happen like your Patrick Mahomes does, it's like he has that magical feel to him. That's why I want him my number one. So what are your thoughts there, Jake? Yeah, so I look at Bryce Young as the best quarterback in the draft. Um, you know, he doesn't have the highest ceiling. I think that goes to Anthony Richardson out of Florida. But, you know, the Panthers didn't move up for to take any other position. Bryce teased this, like you mentioned, with the cancellation of pre-draft visits. I think the the whole short piece, whatever you want to call it, that's already been debunked because Kyler Murray and... I think if if you asked most teams, you, you asked all 32 teams who they would take a number one overall and they had to give their, their public answer, I think Bryce Young would be your consensus favorite. And so that's who I'm picking. I'm going to stick with it. I'm a big fan of his. I think he proved it. You know, when guys like Jalen Waddle, when guys like Jamison Williams, guys like that left, uh, you know, he was still able to be a successful quarterback and, um, 
you know, I, I think he proved it this past year, not as much wide receiver talent as years in the past, but I'm a big fan of his game and I think it makes a lot of sense. And Panthers, I mean, I said it on here before I'll say it again. Panthers are going to the playoffs and Bryce young is going to be hosting a playoff game. Uh, and I, I think they'll have a chance to win that game too, but we'll see what ends up happening. Moving on cam. We got the Houston Texans. Uh, we got a brand new head coach, D'Amico Ryan's taking on this squad. First off, love it. Former player drafted by the Texans. Now he gets to, you know, live out that dream of being, you know, the head coach of the team that literally took a chance on you. Uh, so this is a little interesting, Kim. I, I don't know where you're going to go with this one. There are a lot of people that say the, the Texans are taking CJ Stroud, taking a quarterback. That's a, you know, given, I'm not as sure. And the reason for that Vegas, they lie, but they don't lie all the time. And right mm-hmm. now Vegas is cooking with some serious gas. The idea that will Levis will actually be the second quarterback taken over. I think it was minus 140 to go number two overall. Those are ridiculous odds. Uh, not yeah. something that I would expect. Who do you have coming off the board Uh, to Houston or another team if you decide to trade at number two? That could be a burning question, Jake, (laughs) if if it was one, right? For for folks that don't know, a burning question. That's how we start off our show. So the fact that the Texans would take Will Levis over C.J. Stroud at number two, who is my pick, it's a a hot take. It, It might be, you know, it might be one of those things. But one thing I will say, Will Levis, seeing him in the media lately, right, talking about his arm, throwing that football from the 50-yard line. And, and like, Jake, I know I sent it to you. You were like, oh, I'm not buying it. I don't know. I know Colin Coward was coming on on television. It was like, hey, you know, a guy with this attitude, with this personality, with this ego is not going to work in the NFL, blah, blah, blah. Jake, I like it. Jake, I like it. I like the Will Levis, you know, personality. Um, you know, you got to have some swag when it comes to it. One thing I will say, though, is, you know, if you take like your Will Levis or you take a guy, you know, um, <clears throat> when it comes to just getting through stuff, right? When, when stuff hits the fan, is he going to be macho like he is now, right? What does that look like? So, you know, <clears throat> you see your Josh Allen who can throw the ball like Will Levis can, can probably run the ball or run like Will Levis can, whatever that is. But, you know, you don't really see that person, that type of personality come out through through the media. So, you know, it is what it is. That's on him, but he's not my number two. My number two is CJ Stroud uh, coming out of California as well. I was born in California. He is to uh, him and Bryce Young. So it's kind of cool to see that connection, Jake. I'm trying to find each connection point there. So he's from the Inland Empire and in Rancho Cucamonga out in California. Um, you know, he sat behind Justin Fields when he played at Ohio State. So to see that legacy being passed down, to see, you know, Justin Fields find success in the NFL and for CJ to – to witness, witness that himself. I'm sure it's a lot of confidence um, that, that bubbles in. Um, this whole Bryce Young and CJ Stroud piece is kind of reminding me, you know, when I got went to the went to the NFL with, you know, Mariota and Jameis Winston. They're not the same player. I'm not saying that, but it's like that tug and pull. Who's gonna be the guy? Who is him? Right. And of course, you 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 bring out that uh that that sizzle information with uh, Will Levis being being the guy, but this reminds me of that, you know, with the C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young, just kind of that battle here. Um, C.J. Stroud throwing the guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, like I said, elite arm. You got elite receivers, a really quick release. I mean, it looks easy. It looks almost effort- effortless. And like I said, the difference between him and Bryce Young is when Bryce Young will play football, it, it, it looks magical. Like, nah, he didn't, he didn't just do that. And so I didn't I didn't I don't I wouldn't say I didn't get that from C.J. Stroud, but. He's a professional. At the end of the day, he's a professional, hands down. Draft him number two. I don't know about Will Levis. Uh, uh, draft C.J. Stroud number two. He's coming from that Ohio State, you know, legacy there where it's it's a great football move and it's going to be a great business move as well. Ohio State fans travel like crazy. They'll be in Texas. They'll probably be packing out that, that stadium there. So I like the C.J. Stroud move. Um, Jake, what are your thoughts? I have Will Anderson Jr., Going to the Houston Texans. Uh, okay. Look, you know, D'Amico Ryans has a lot of time here. I, I don't think people realize it. And whether I agree with it or not, I'm starting to buy into the hype that there won't be like we talked about that. Schefter said there might not be a quarterback until pick four after Bryce Young. I kind of 
don't necessarily see that, but I kind of feel like Houston isn't picking a quarterback here. They have two first round picks. And I think the, the best thing for them to do is, you know, kind of go with your gut. If you feel like Will Anderson Jr. is the best defensive player on your board and is the best overall player on your board, and you're hoping that Bryce Young falls but not expecting him to, you got to go with your gut here. And I think D'Amico Ryan's defensive guy, uh, you know, I just think at the end of the day, he's going to end up being their best player available. I know there are people that still think that Tyree Wilson could go here. I think that's a little too early for him. Uh, so I'm going to go with Will Anderson Jr. I think he's a great run defender. I think that's something that just stands out to me. Um, you know, can de- deconstruct blocks. He's a good pass rusher. He is one of the best players in this draft, bar none. You're going out, you're getting a defensive player for a defensive-minded coach. With two first-round picks, there might be a little deal here with, uh, you know, in, in that war room, like, all right, D'Amico, you get your defensive guy as long as we get to get our offensive guy at pick 12. So I don't know if that's what's going to happen, but I'm taking Will Anderson Jr. here out of Alabama to go to the Texans at pick two. But number three here is very interesting because the Cardinals now, based on my board, there's only one quarterback off the board. That pick just became incredibly valuable. On your side, even though two quarterbacks went, that pick is still very valuable. You can get the number one pass rusher. You could get one of the t- the top two quarterbacks remaining. You can go out and get Jalen Carter. You can go out and get De- you know Devin Witherspoon. I'm curious to see, Cam, do the Cardinals keep the pick in your mock and who do they select if they do? Yes. So Jake, they keep the pick. Okay. They keep the pick. The Cardinals keep the pick. I think they I think they need everything they can get at this point, Jake. They need all the excitement they can get. Uh if they if they go down, like after those I'm uniforms. Not... <laughs> hey, that's neither here nor there. You know, hey, the Cardinals, they got a lot to work on, Jake. We talk about this in the Believe Believe in Rams podcast. We we always, you know, what comes to 49ers. The Cardinals, Seahawks, we give them smoke, and the Cardinals got a lot to work on. So go ahead and work on that, y'all. <laughs> One thing I will say is you mentioned Will Anderson. He was on my board as well, Jake. You know, the fact that we talk about Bryce Young, of course, Heisman Trophy winner, all all football, everything, but the fact that Will Anderson was up for the Heisman at some point, like, come on, man, if you're if you're getting Heisman votes – as a defensive player, that's next level. Um, you know, one thing in my notes I have here, I think they used to call him the Terminator in high school before <laughs> he got to college. Just the way he plays ball, like he looks ready to go. Just just turn on the tape and just watch his stance. I mean, he looks like he's just ready to just <laughs> tear somebody up. You know, a lot of times when you rush the passer, you got a more of a relaxed look. Not Will Anderson. Will Anderson is just everything is turned up a notch there. So, uh, you know, I have some here in my notes. His get-off is insane. The way he gets off the football is next level. When it comes to people blocking him, they're going to have to have two blockers minimum, right? And a lot of times you're on the edge, that, that counts as a tight end or running back. So, um, you know, I, I said if he stays healthy, just the way he attacks the football, it's gonna. it reminds me of the, the Bosa brothers, the Watt brothers, just the intensity and the way he gets after the quarterback. So, and, and Jake, I also have my notes just watching this film. The man can cover too. The man can get back and play zone defense. So you mentioned it. he's one of the best players on the field here and uh in the draft. He was up for the Heisman, I think fifth in, in Heisman voting. Sign him up. Whatever team, you know, sign him up. But I do think the Cardinals need to go get him. They need to figure that out. They got the quarterback. So go ahead and figure out how to get somebody that can get the quarterback the, the football back. And I do think that's Will Anderson. So that's my thought. So I have them going in a different direction. Yeah, I'm trading okay. the pick because okay. I, I, you know, I need more help, Cam. I can't just, I know you go out, you get a, a Pro Bowl guy, and that makes a lot of sense. And look, I mean, Will Anderson Jr. is not a bad pick, but I think the Cardinals have a very good opportunity here. A lucrative deal potentially uh, could be in place here. And that team is going to be the Tennessee Titans. Moving okay. up from pick 11 all the way up to pick three, it's going to cost them a first rounder next year, a second rounder this year, maybe even a late pick on day three. Uh, and I think it's going to be worth it because I think they're going to go up and get CJ Stroud out of Ohio State. 
I think right now the thing that's tipping this for me is one, we already know it's it's been out there. They want to move up. They're interested in moving up. They're interested in moving up for a quarterback. Number two, we've heard about Ryan Tannehill, the buzz. They want to move Ryan Tannehill. That tells me that they're interested in a quarterback. It tells me it's not Anthony Richardson because Richardson <laughs> is not ready to start day one. Uh, like I initially kind of thought maybe he could, but the Titans have too good of a roster. I'm not saying they're a great team, but they have a roster that's ready to compete that I think it would be doing, you know, a disservice to guys that, you know, especially like a Jeffrey Simmons who just signed his deal would be a, a disservice to those guys to not try and compete and, and put the best quarterback on the field. So I think CJ Stroud franchise quarterback level, best pocket passer in the draft by far. And I think with the Tannehill piece, I think that's really something that kind of facilitates this deal. And maybe they're able to move Tannehill to the Arizona Cardinals as part of this deal in some weird way, eating some money, giving him to Arizona. Arizona now has a quarterback to get him through, you know, half the season with Kyler, you know, on the bench injured. You could see something like that or they trade him later on. But CJ Stroud is your starting quarterback in my little mock draft here. He's your starting quarterback in the Tennessee Titans. Okay, fair enough, Jake. I mean, you never know when the when the draft comes, Jake, and it, it happens. We're just gonna hey, clip this up, post it out there, and say, "Hey, told you so." <laughs> told you so. Or there I'm gonna go. be absolutely wrong, and people are gonna laugh, and I'm all for it. <laughs> and, and that's okay. That's okay, right? We're just giving our thoughts on, on the draft here, our thoughts on these players. Um, because we're going to be seeing them again, right? This is where, what, week 51 in and off the edge, Jake, and we got a lot of more weeks uh, to jump in about this. So you're just hearing them now. We're just planting the seed at the moment. So no worries there. Um, for me, uh, at number four, Jake, uh, I know we have the Colts coming up here. So we talk about their quarterback situation. We talk about your Nick Foles. We talk about your Gardner Minshew. These are guys who won football games. Nick Foles, Nick Foles got a Super Bowl under his belt. I played with Nick. Great guy. Great teacher. And there's someone in this draft, Jake, a quarterback who needs a great teacher, right? Gardner Minshew can show him, hey, some th different techniques, how to throw the ball over the mountains, uh, whatever you want there. Um, Anthony Richardson, I, I got him going to the Colts, Jake. I got Anthony Richardson going to the Colts. I know you mentioned he's not ready to start yet. You know, hey, once he step on, steps on that football field, he gets that playbook down. He has Nick Foles to coach him up. Gardner Minshew, who's found some success um, at different places, Jags, uh, Eagles, same thing, Nick Foles, Eagles as well, uh, Rams. So he has some folks that can show him the way. So I'm confident that, you know, if Anthony Richardson does get on that that roster, let's say he sits for training OTAs, training camp, and maybe throughout the season, Nick Foles starts things off. And then, hey, never, you know, once he gets his, you know, once Nick Foles does his thing, um, Anthony Richardson understands how the speed of the game. He's able to call some, call some calls from the sideline and understand what's going on. And I think we get Anthony Richardson in there, right, and see kind of what he does there. So I like Anthony Richardson going to the Colts. Uh, I mean, people just turn on this tape, man. I mean, my man did a backflip at the pro day um, and set, set it off. I mean, after he did that, and I think someone mentioned this, but they were like, hey, when you're at your pro day, show off. Like, show everything. So once he did that backflip, I was like, oh, sign him. And, Jake, you were high on him at first, Jake. You were high on him a long time ago. Um, so to see a guy like this go forth in the draft, fourth in the draft would be great. Um, and Jake, I knew, I knew he was going to be special. I think me and my lady, we were watching the game against Utah. She was kind of casually watching it. And, um, it was that two, it was a two point conversion play that jump spin where like the guy thought he tackled him and he spun out of it and threw a touchdown. When I saw that play, I was like, Ooh, he's him. <laughs> he's him. So I got Anthony Richardson. Colts fourth pick like I said home run ability and hit the wow factor I'm with you uh, I have Anthony Richardson to the Colts and the reasons you stated I mean they signed Minshew to start and I think this puts him in position where there's no pressure Richardson as good as you can be you're not going to be needed to be our starter we're going to take this slow if you know by any means you outplay him in practice we can have that conversation but you were a one-year starter to be fair uh, there were other guys there emory jones was there in florida so you know kyle trask guys like that so you didn't get your opportunity until this past year you look good but there are some things we just want to work on no i think it makes a lot of sense cam and you know i think Minshew people forget uh, is a solid quarterback. I mean, I don't think he gets enough respect. He, he's had to come in in a pinch and, and make things happen. 
And Sam Ellinger's also on the roster. I'm not like really high on him either, but you know, it gives you kind of, you have depth, you know, you have four quarterbacks at that point. And, you know, I think he's the best scrambling quarterback in the draft. He's got arm talent, uh, you know, for days, so to speak, effortless throw of the football, you know, can really layer it over linebackers. Um, he's going to have his highs and lows. And I think this is somebody that, you know, compares very similarly to a Patrick Mahomes and the fact that he's not necessarily ready to start day one because Patrick Mahomes a little different, right? Played in, you know, he played way more than him. He had more experience, but people forget Mahomes playing that air raid style offense. Didn't throw a lot of picks. He was my number one quarterback in that draft. Loved him, but Mahomes didn't start right away. That was Alex Smith. So when he took over that last game of the year, you know, to kind of get him some reps because they had already clinched a spot in the playoffs. They started to see, okay, this guy is literally who we thought he was. The next year he's starting could be something like that. Minshew's a one year thing. And then, you know, they're in the playoff race forever. They clinched the playoff berth. And then week 18, you got Anthony Richardson. Hey, you're starting to see what you can do next year. After he shows you some things, he starts. So I love this. And I think Chris Ballard is going to be jumping over the moon because you didn't have to make any sort of trade. He just fell in your lap. And I'll say this right now, Cam, Anthony Richardson has elite level potential. We are talking on the level of Patrick Mahomes. I think he's the second best player in the NFL. If he reaches his potential, he'll be right below Patrick Mahomes. I think he is that legit. I think he's got cam uh, Newton's ability to make plays, um, you know, off script with his legs. And I think he breaks tackles. Well, he's just, he's got it all. And so I think really he just needs to put it all together. You know, as far as a technical standpoint, we'll see what ends up happening. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on him. Yeah. I mean, Jake, they gave the man number 15 at university of Florida. The only they, other they person knew. that wore, they knew, I mean, Tim Tebow wore that number. I thought that thing was going to be retired knew. and hung it up in the right, hang it up in the rafters. So but, weird. It's not, he's the best college football player of all time. <laughs> yeah. And then Anthony Richardson gets his number and like those touchdowns and spins on people and do does backflip. Like, come on. <laughs> they, they knew. They knew, yeah, man. It, it, it's a great compl- <laughs> it's a great compliment. And I think it's on Anthony Richardson at this point, right? To make sure that that jersey's hung up forever and that nobody else gets it. Um, but no, you just mentioned it. Just he could be one of the better players to to play in the NFL next year, right? Depending on how things go. And if he gets a great coach, a great quarterback coach to 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 walk him through the process, right? Walk him through, not run, uh, just walk that young man through. Another person, um, just kind of going to the fifth pick here, um, with Seattle that I would that I would love to see see go there. And I do think if Seattle decides him, they're going to break the record for the decibel meter, Jake. Just the way this man plays, um, you know, I know a lot of things in his profile is maturity. They want him to mature a little bit. Um, I, I say uh, here, I know we compare people to Aaron Donald a lot. I just say Aaron Donald elite. No one will ever be Aaron Donald. No one will ever be your Michael Jordan or your LeBron James, but. This guy can be very, very elite if he matures. And I got Jalen Carter, right? 6'3", coming out of Georgia, 314 pounds. Jake, we all know, like, the headlines, the headline stuff, that stuff came out right before, you know, the bowl came. We know all the stuff he has to go through, right? He has to do community service, driving classes. I know he's been through a lot uh, when it comes to the reckless driving piece. Um, But, you know, you work on that, right? You work on that. No one's perfect. And, and you follow them through, you make sure that they mature and, and kind of see where they go. Jalen Carter could be a great addition to the Seahawks, right? You know, Pete Carroll talking about Geno Smith and evaluating quarterbacks in the draft and understanding what that looks like. You know, a defensive guy like this, you got Bobby Wagner back. So you got someone that can coach this guy up. We talk about maturity. Bobby Wagner would be like, hey, come talk to me, young man. All right, let me just show you, you know, the way to operate. And so I, I like a Jalen Carter playing on the defensive line uh, for the Seahawks. You know, they, they got a decent team, Jake. I mean, we watched, you know, last year they were struggling at the beginning and then they kind of brought it around towards the end of the year. Hey, they beat out the Rams, right? And so a guy like Jalen Carter would be a great addition to their team. Like I said, I think they I think they break the decibel meter, right, Jake, if they bring him on that football team. You know, I think he's going to cause some havoc. He's going to he's gonna create some sacks. And he was a part of a, a, a defense at UGA who, who um, you know, didn't allow more than 77 yards per game. To be a part of that, that's a mentality. You know what I mean? So if he brings that mentality to the Seahawks where Bobby Wagner is, it's only going to spread. It's only going to spread for the rest of the team. And 
folks will be that much more dangerous. So I got Jalen Carter going to the Seahawks at number five. I do too. The crazy, you know, great minds think alike, but uh, it's, I think three out of the five there, um, you know, we have, but no, I think Jalen Carter at the end of the day, he's one of the best players in this draft. He has off the field stuff. It's not as concerning as it's been in the past. We've seen honestly worse. Lyle Collins uh, got blown up into something that it really wasn't. The poor guy was trying to help the uh, the authorities out, and he ended up going undrafted. But when I look at Jalen, uh, you know Carter, to me, um, you know the Seahawks need help on their defensive line, and I I think that people forget. Yes, Jaron Reed, that was a good pickup. And yes, they have Draymond Jones. Miles Adams and Brian Moan is not going to be enough. And they lost Puna Ford in free. Well, he's still a free agent, but he's not on the team. So I think Jalen Carter fits right in there. I don't know why this pick is anything mocked anything other than Jalen Carter at this point. I see way too many mocks not having him going here. I think this is the perfect fit. Otherwise you trade down, you know, if, if he doesn't make sense for you, then you're not interested. You, you need the position, but you don't want to deal with the red flags. And if that's the case, trade down, go get a day of war or go get can But to me, I agree with you. I think Carter makes the most sense at uh five here. Yep. I like him there. Um, moving forward, going to Tennessee numbers at number six. Um, I know you flipped. I think you traded with Tennessee and you kind of flipped and dipped. Uh, I'm going to keep Tennessee there. Uh, I'm going to go with okay. Will Levis. I'm going to go with Will Levis there. You you mentioned it um, with that with this quarterback talent. Yeah, I know Vegas has him going number two. I got him kind of going, you know, number six after Anthony Richardson and the CJ Stroud. Um, you know, I know he started at Penn State and worked his way over to Kentucky. Um, we talked about this, the Manning passing camp. I mean, you know, he was he was on their show as well. Um, he had Peyton Manning cracking up about his ability to throw the football. So, um, you know, character is an important thing. And I know I talked about, uh, you know, him being on Colin Coward's show and him not liking his personality. Jake, you need a guy that can sling the football. And he he ha- he can do that. He's a captain as well, right? And he might be a silly person or his character might might be, you know, whatever it is. But he's a captain. His, his teammates respect him. They love him. So, you know, we just have to deal with his personality. And, um, you know, I kind of have – I won't say the comparison here is like Josh Allen, but the way he's able to throw the football, the way he's able to zip it into tight spaces, um, the way he's able to run and use his legs to create space. Um, You know, just even seeing his pro day, just the way he was taking his snaps, his feet, he looked jittery, he looked fresh, he looked explosive. So I can see him, you know, stepping into this role at Tennessee behind Tannehill. Tannehill can run as well. Tad boy Tannehill, he has wheels. So – being able to take them skills and we go from the business side as well, Jake, you know, him going to Kentucky, you know, Tennessee, it's not that far. I looked it up. It's probably about, uh, it's probably like three or four hours. So, you know, those fans can make that trip, you know, wear, wear their Kentucky jerseys to the Tennessee Titans game, maybe buy some more Will Levis gear and make it happen. But I, I always want to look at this, you know, from a business perspective and a playing perspective, because these guys aren't just athletes. They're more than that. And I think Will Levis can be great for that Tennessee market and, being behind, um, you know, just the talent that's already there. So that's what I have for Will Levis. I know you traded up for him, but I'm curious to hear your sixth pick. So I have the Lions staying put here. Um, They traded Jeff Okuda, as you know, to the Atlanta Falcons, um, you know, and I think obviously spending a high pick on a tight end after Eric Ebron, no one thought they would do that. They go out and they get TJ Hawkinson. That was my guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they traded him, but they did. People have been saying there's no way they're going to draft a cornerback high after what happened with Jeff Okuda. Congrats on being wrong because they're absolutely going to do that. Devin Witherspoon out of Illinois is a certified dog. He is a day one starter. He is the best corner in the NFL draft. And to me, when you're looking about the, the swag, the ferociousness, tenacity of Jalen Ramsey, he's got that. He doesn't have the size of Ramsey. He doesn't have necessarily that size. But what I actually compared Witherspoon to, I compared him to Darius Slay of the Philadelphia Eagles. And Mm. Darius Slay made a living for the Detroit Lions. So, look, I think anybody in Detroit would want Witherspoon on that team. It's working out well. They went out and got Kirby Joseph last year out of Illinois. Go get another Illinois guy. 
I got Witherspoon. Okay, I so and I made a trade on that one too. I meant to say that I made a trade for that. Oh pick, yeah, but, I figured. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Withers, Witherspoon's a baller though, Jake. Um, he you is. Know, I, I have here in my notes. He's he's talking shit. <laughs> the one thing I know, he's making a play, and he's t- I have here talk shit and physical, and I like that. Right, you got to have that swag, like you said, Jalen Ramsey or you know Slay. Like those guys talk smack. You got to be able to back it up with it. He can he can back it up. You you want, turn on that tape, and he can back it up. I love his gameplay. Um, you know, first team All American. Like I said, coming out of Illinois, Jim Thorpe Award, like. He, he's him. He's him. So um, I love that pick, Jake. I have a different cornerback, Jake, coming, coming off the board, um, you know, at, at number seven. I know you, we just mentioned that trade, um, but I have for number seven, I got the Raiders coming up here. Uh, you might have something a little bit different. Uh, we have a couple of trades, things get a little wonky. But going to the Raiders, I got Christian Gonzalez, cornerback out of, out of Oregon. Um, you know, ran a 438, 41-inch fert, 11.1 inch broad. Jake, I had a I had a chance to witness witness this in person, Jake. Going to the Colorado game. My little sister goes to the University of Colorado. And we're sitting there. It's our first time seeing her at Colorado. Woo. And <laughs> you're just seeing the buff, like you're just seeing, you know, their their team, Colorado. You're just seeing sadness. <laughs> The whole day because my man Christian Gonzalez has two interceptions, one for a touchdown versus uh versus Colorado, and then another one he just picks off against his former team. Uh my man went absolutely off versus Colorado and seeing him in person, he's the real deal. Um for him, I don't really have you know the shit talker for him, but I got super swag. You know, he's just cool, comma collective. He almost has like that that um kind of like with Jalen Ramsey who makes a big play. He don't really talk much, but he's kind of just sits back and like, yeah, you know, I'm him. So uh if you got uh the Diggs brother, right? From from the Cowboys, just kind of that that swag. You make a big play, and it's like, yeah, I'm him. So I, I like Christian Gonzalez. Like I said, I seen him first, you know, in first person. Um you know, he has a tackle on his highlight tape, man, where, or on his tape where he flips a Colorado player on his head, one of the fullbacks. Like, to see a corner, like, up in someone like that, that's – bring him on my team. So, I got Christian Gonzalez, my man. Yeah, I like Christian Gonzalez a lot. Uh, you know, I, I think the athleticism jumps off the charts. And, you know, obviously, you look at the range and just the fact – the burn rate it doesn't get burned, right? I think the biggest issue with him was the physicality. I think I, you see it but you don't see it consistently. There are times where he's like, I want to hit this guy like a steam and demon, uh, a missile, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, there are times where I'm not in that mood. You know what I mean? I want to see him play with. Yeah. Yeah. Fluffy pillow. (laughs) But like that, that, that's the thing. Like with Devin Witherspoon, he's always in that mood, man. He wants to hit you. Then while you're in pain on the ground, he wants to tell you how much pain you're in on the ground. Like that is, that's him. You know, he is him. So that I agree with that. I got Peter Skaronsky going to the Raiders. Now there's a lot of interesting dialogue going on with Skaronsky. And unless there's a quarterback like Anthony Richardson that falls here, I don't think the Raiders are taking a quarterback. I really don't Mm. because Richardson could sit behind Jimmy G. That would make sense. I think they believe in Jimmy G. So if they take a quarterback, maybe it's fourth round or whatever, but I think they believe in him. They paid him, you know, like it. So look, I think they're going to get protection for Jimmy G. I think the big thing is you look over at that right tackle position. Okay. They, they got Colt Miller. They're, they're fine at left tackle, but right tackle is a problem. They have Jermaine Illuminor. They have Brandon Parker. Neither of those guys are good. So to speak, they're guys, but I don't feel good about Jimmy G, you know, coming off that right side. So I need to go out and get myself a guy. Maybe I move Skaronsky to left tackle and move, uh, you know, Miller right tackle. But the point is I need to go out and get a guy. Right. And mm-hmm. Skaronsky out of Northwestern is that guy. I think he's somewhat being unfairly treated because of the, the length. There are people saying that he, he needs to move to guard. The guy's a tackle. Okay. I, I can, I can't stress it enough. I'm watching him go against, you know, these top defensive guys out of the big 10 and he's just stonewalling them. Okay. Miss me with the Skaronsky is in a tackle stuff. Okay. He is absolutely a tackle. And to me, he comes off the board here. He's the best tackle in the draft and uh, he can play on my team any day. 
Yeah, no, Skaronski, uh, one thing I like about him is his hands. You know, he keeps his hands high. He can move really well. He He's sound, uh, sound technician. So I like it, Jake. I'm right there with you. I like it a lot. Um, for me, I, I want to get rolling here a little bit. Um, for me here, I know we got the Falcons coming up soon. Um, I got a guy, a, a Texas Tech guy, right, uh, 6'6", 270. Um, I do as well. <laughs> okay, perfect. Love it. I, I won't I won't share too much. I you know, pass it to you. You can share some, but uh my man had seven sacks on the season, honorable mentions. Uh, you know, he can stand up, he got he can put his hand in the dirt. Um I have a comp for him, Will. I mean, uh Jake, I have a comp for him as uh Will Golson is his comp for me. Um more athletic than Will. I know Will's an athlete, but he can move a little bit better than Will, I believe. Will is more of a, a, a three tech um you know, this young man can stand up and push the edge. So, but I like the body type, the similar body type as Will Ghostin. Like I said, it's long, he's powerful, um, and he can force fumbles, right? Just by him putting that hand in there, he can knock that ball down. So um, I like Tyree Wilson going to the Falcons. Um, you know, they're going to need someone to get that football, and, and he can get that done. Like I said, 6'6", 270, coming off the edge with great moves and, uh, and great length. I got him locked in there. How about you, Jake? I know you said you have him around the same around the same place. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I have uh, Tyree Wilson going off the board here to Atlanta at pick eight. I, I think at the end of the day, he is a top ten player. I don't necessarily subscribe to the hype of him being the top defensive player in the draft, going number two, uh, like some of the hype is is pushing him towards, but. I kind of see a guy, you know, he's similar to Ziggy Ansa, who, you know, he was drafted by the Detroit Lions. Kind of that just monster type of, you know, edge defender. Maybe more of, I would probably say he's more of a 4-3 defensive end than he is a 3-4 outside linebacker. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's where I like him personally. I don't think he's a perfect prospect, but the massive frame he has to grow into, I think he's got one of the highest ceilings in the NFL uh, draft and his motors just always on. I really like the guy. I mean, I think he's a top 10 talent and he's going to help that Falcons pass rush. And I'll tell you right now, the Falcons will be sitting there. Like we really want to go with the in-house Georgia guy, Nolan Smith, but they're, they're not gonna be able to pass up that size. They're just not. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. And, um, you know, here here next uh, coming out of the number ninth pick, you know, I got the I got the Bears here uh, at number nine. Um, someone that is very impressive and blocked for a quarterback that went a little bit earlier in the draft. But I got Paris Johnson, uh, Ohio I do State guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. OK, well, yeah, um, you know, he's six, six, like I said, six, six, three, 13, uh, big guy, you know, um, and I feel like, too, when it comes to – I got here on my notes, Big Nasty. <laughs> I got him here as Big Nasty Pancake Machine. Um, he's 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 brutal, Jake. And there's people that you want to see like that at the offensive tackle position because we just talked about defensive ends who are bringing the smoke. So I want a guy who can who can put that smoke out. And I think I think he can put that smoke, just smoke out in, in, in Paris Johnson, you know, coming from Ohio State, high-profile prof, high school, and just, just a – a pancake machine right and you know and what i have here in my notes as well is like if he can fine tune his craft i can see him playing for a long time just the way he carries himself you know i know he's only in college but just the way he carries himself i'm like oh this is like a 10 year 12 year pro in the in the nfl so i like paris uh, paris johnson going to going to the bears there and um, you know, just kind of with the Bears makeup, you know, blocking for Justin Fields. I think that's important. <laughs> that's number one. Get a guy that can block for Justin. So I like him there at that position. Yeah, I really like Paris Johnson Jr. out of Ohio State. Um, you know, I, I think, look, at the end of the day, uh, I think there's a chance that he's going to be the best offensive tackle on a lot of teams boards. I mean, I think mm-hmm. probably more than half the probably more than 20 teams in the first round will like him most. And I think there's going to be a lot of teams look at Skaronsky as a guard and the bears. My thing here is they had the number one overall pick. We talked about that. They traded down to nine with, you know, Carolina, you doubled down on Justin Fields. That's what you did. 
you had an opportunity, in my opinion, to get better quarterbacks. I thought Bryce Young was a better quarterback. Anthony Richardson has a higher ceiling. CJ Stroud's probably better. Justin Fields, he runs very well, right? But I have concerns about how well he's seeing the field and whatnot. And sure, now he has weapons. So we'll see what ends up happening. But if you were going to double down on Fields, my friend, you need to go and protect him. We talk about that all the time. So Paris Johnson makes a ton of sense. I, I love the pick. And quite honestly, I think that's the one that they're going to make as well. Yep. I like it. I like it. And at number 10, I got I got the Eagles up here. Um, I know we talked about a great cornerback in Slay. Um, you know, I want a little combo love here. So similar to how the Cowboys, they got two high profile cornerbacks. I want to go with Devon Witherspoon here as my Eagles pick here. I, and I know we're doubling down on defense here, but we got to get we got to get some folks who can get Jalen Hurst the ball back. <laughs> we got the Briggs truck on the offensive side. So let's go pick that ball off and get it right back to him. You talked about, um, you know, Mr. Witherspoon being all corner all everything he is that um i see he's only he's 5'10 you know compared to christian gonzalez who's a 6'3 so you know the, with this one we have to talk a little bit more smack right we call that the, the small man's napoleon syndrome right where you know for even for me you know being six feet tall playing in the nfl these guys are six five i gotta i gotta talk my smack right and so you know i see him i see him as that pit bull at the cornerback position with slay on the other side i think they can get things going on that defense so that that's my thoughts there <laughs> this is from the new Orleans trade. So that's why the Eagles have the 10th pick, despite the fact they were just in the super bowl, man, the rich get richer. Don't they? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Eagles go BPA here. Regardless. I think you and I are in the same boat. Um, I have them going with my second overall cornerback, Christian Gonzalez. So we both had corner mm-hmm. in mind. Um, they have the right. talent in the room already with Bradbury slay Maddox. And I like Zach, uh, Zach McPherson. Um, but I think, the talent is too good to pass up. And especially with slay into his thirties. Now, you know, he almost left. I mean, keep that in mind. That was a later on. That was a deal that was reworked and we were kind of confused what was going on there. Yeah. So I I think Christian Gonzalez is a perfect fit and he can play safety if they need him to. I think he's kind of that Derwin James esque guy, maybe not as physical, um, definitely not as physical, but he's kind of, he's very similar to Derwin James in that aspect. Cause I thought Derwin James could start at corner when he was coming out. Like I, you know, that was the thing. I think that's kind of interchangeable. We kind of have to go a little bit quicker here, but, uh, the Cardinals have my, uh, 11th pick and on your board, that would be, well, that wouldn't be the Titans cause you have the trade. So I already forgot who you, the lions would be the pick. For lions, you. So yeah. we're already, we're mixing everything up and everyone's confused, but 11th overall pick you have the lions i have tennessee or i have the cardinals who are you going with <laughs> uh yeah i'm going with joey porter porter jr another guy with extremely long arms uh cornerback i know his dad played in the nfl as well uh, with the steelers so um i'm going joey porter um he he's a guy he's a guy like i said long arms he can make 34 inch arms we're in a four four six at the four at the um at the combine and second team all american so you know, his dad played, but this guy can ball as well. They're not like just passing him through. Um, but I, I got <laughs> Joey Porter. And um, like I said, his arms are crazy long. I mean, he has like a, a leads a team in, in pass breakups and leads leads the league in pass breakups. So, um, you know, 11 plus, 11 of them. I, I want him on my team. If he's breaking up passes, put him on my squad. So I have, and I, I like Joey Porter Jr. I actually, I, I'm not going to spoil it because we have the second part, but we'll, you know, we'll get to that. Uh, so Nolan Smith is the pick for the Cardinals. All right. You, you go down a little bit in terms of Will Anderson being the most, I, I would say the most well-rounded prospect, but Nolan Smith has the unbelievable athleticism that will put him well into the top 15 in this draft. And I think Arizona is getting an absolute stud of a pass rusher, but also so he's not just a pure speed rusher. I was so impressed with his ability to stop the run. You know, he can break, uh, you know, basically he can, you know, contain, he can deconstruct blocks. Um, you know, I think he's a true off ball linebacker type, you know, as far as like the agility there, if they need to hit him to play that as well. But um, he definitely works as an edge defender and he can explode. And, you know, I just think this is a guy that makes a lot of sense for them and they'll, They'll definitely be happy about this. They add another second, a first, a late round pick. I mean, this is a win from trading down from three in this mock draft. 
that's a big win. Hey, that's a big win. It's all about it's about it's about hitting. You got to hit if you're a team. You got to hit, especially the Rams. The Rams definitely got to hit this year. But yeah. uh, <laughs> going to our next one, um, I got the Texans here, um, and I'm going to go Peter Skorinski. Skorinski, uh, you know they got a quarterback. You know, and and bright, they got a quarterback that they had to block for now. So get a guy that can can that can get that done. And you, you know, you raved about him earlier, just the way he's able to move, um, playing playing on the blind side as well. Um, and I mentioned, mentioned to you his hands. He has great hands. Um, you know, they're always up. You know, a lot of times we talk about with boxers and, you know, getting fatigued. A lot of times those arms drop. His hands are always up, and I really like that a lot. So, um, you know, d- a little bit different, um, a little bit different than our guy Paris. You know, Paris, he's he's a bigger guy, so sometimes he keeps him a little bit lower. But, you know, I, I like what I see from from uh, Skoronsky, just kind of keeping them hands – Skoronsky just keeping them hands up and and playing effectively and playing playing sound. So – over to you, Jake. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I like Skaronsky a lot, as you know. I have the Texans at 12 staying here. I know some people, you know, see a trade. I don't. I think they get their quarterback. I think they go with Will Levis here. Um, I'm not, you know, overly excited about it. I don't think Will Levis is a first round talent. I think he's a second round <sighs> talent. But I think, you know, this is where they'll go. I think this is somebody that comes right out of the gate. He'll have about three, four years to figure it out. This is a team that has a lot of draft picks from the uh, Deshaun Watson trade. This is a team that has new coaching. This is a team that is entering a new era. And I think he's going to get a chance to work out all of his issues on the football field. I think he'll start, um, you know, and if he's not ready, then it'll be Davis Mills. But either way. I think they're going to wait and get their quarterback because I don't think they're in any hurry. I think they want to make sure they, you know, went out and got the best possible defensive player that they could. And then they go and get Will Levis at pick 12. Okay. I like it. And then rolling on the, I got the jet. We got the jets coming up next. Um, the you Packers. Know, I got, sorry, the, the Packers <laughs> just the trade that happened yesterday. That just, that just happened. Um, so if we have the Packers up next there, Jake, um, I'm going to go Dalton Kincaid. I'm going to go Dalton Kincaid on, on that one. Um, and I'm sure you probably do I'm too. going Dalton Kincaid as well. That, it, that means we both believe the first pass catcher will be a tight end. How about that? There you go. First pass catcher. And I have in my notes here. Just, just throw it up. I have there in my notes. Just throw the ball up. Dalton's going to come down with it. Um, and I have throw it up for a touchdown or a first down. I have here Kelsey and Kittle um, type ball skills, just the way he's going to go up and attack that football. And it, it's it, you, you can't just make those comparisons, but Dalton Kincaid is him. And so, um, and I have a, a second. I have a second part here in my notes from watching this film. Throw him the damn ball. Um, I know he's gonna, have, he's gonna have to work on blocking a little bit in the pros, but he, he's really that receiver type is going to, that's going to go up snag that football for your team yeah he's gonna help jordan love a lot i mean him christian watson romeo dobbs i love it um moving on to the 14 who do you got 14 um should i know i know my uh draft <laughs> selection got thrown off of here um so we got the patriots here i'm going uh our brian branch uh safety from alabama um just the way he just the way he plays he's he's effective in the game um and coming from georgia as well so sandy creek that's not far from where i came up from um you know hey 90 ta- 90 tackles three sacks and seven pbus can't beat that second team all american like hey uh, and i have here great blitz ability very disruptive you know um, and i can see him more as a, as a as of a nickel you know i can see him playing in the slot a lot of the times of course he's playing safety but he can also play in the slot as well so brian branch going to the patriots from alabama I got Lucas Van Ness uh, going to the Patriots. Uh, LVN is flying up boards. He never really started a game, which is kind of crazy, but he's got positional versatility. I think he's going to work in that multiple defensive front that they play with Uche going into a contract year and the Patriot Wade not being paying those guys and just moving on. This seems like a no brainer pick. He looks like a Patriot. Uh, I think they get the kid out of Iowa. Okay, I like it. And um, our, our last two here, um, I know we're going back to the Jets now. And for the Jets, I got our guy, Broderick, uh, let's see, Broderick Jones coming out of UGA, offensive tackle, uh, two-time. Like you, you brought him up a little bit earlier. Uh, you had him higher on your board, but, uh, you know, two-time natty champ. So go ahead and get him in there, 6'5", uh, 311 pounds, around a 4'9", at offensive tackle. Um, he's great with twists. He can recover really well. Um, and one thing, one of my critiques was his hands a little bit too low. 
I, I don't like his hands. I need his hand to be up a little bit more so he can get ready to, to punch. But Broderick Jones is uh, my guy going to the Jets to protect Aaron Rodgers. I got Darnell Wright, so a different one out of Tennessee. I think his stock is flying. I remember I had a way too early mock draft of him going in the second round, but um, this is a plug and play offensive tackle. I think he makes sense. Now, you, now the Jets have Tucker, they have Brown, they have Becton, uh, they have Mitchell. You know, I think they have a lot of depth there. Um, you go out and you get Aaron Rodgers, a guy, and then uh, pick 16. I have Deontay Banks going to the commanders. I think you're getting one of the most athletic corners to ever come out of the draft. Everyone seems to be mocking Joey Porter jr. Here, although I know you're not going to, um, but you know, I, I, I like the pick. I think they need some athletic help and uh, they need to, you know, bolster that cornerback room. I'm going, I'm going Bijan for my 16th pick, Jake, wow. at Washington. Yeah, I know. Bijan Robinson, like I said, uh, every time I watch him, I, I fall in love a little bit more, you know, kind of like a Josh Jacobs. Or, I keep saying Reggie Bush. He's wearing that five, the way he breaks an open field. I like the Reggie Bush comparison. Uh, but, you know, he had three 2,000-yard seasons in high school. I mean, the guy is, the guy is next level. Um, and I think he's going to do the same thing once he gets to the NFL. You're going to see – 2000 yard seasons. Um, I love the way he plays. And then he won the, he won the Doak Walker award. So nation's top running back. See him in the NFL. I love to see him in the 16th pick. Well, that's definitely uh that was a twist. I wasn't expecting that. So appreciate you guys tuning in, but before we let you go, a special happy birthday to former Cowboys safety, Darren Woodson, a three time Super Bowl champion, three time all pro five time pro bowler played all 12 years with the Dallas Cowboys started 162 games, 23 interceptions, two touchdowns and 967 tackles. My man was a baller. He's not in the hall of fame, but he's one of the hall of very good players that doesn't get enough credit. <laughs> So uh, happy birthday to Darren Woodson. Big birthday to Big Woodson. Happy birthday. All right. So that's going to do it. Appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Later, folks.